I'm Lisa Bardot, and today we're going to learn how to create a stylized illustration from photo references using Procreate. Making art is about two things, visualizing what you want your art to look like, and developing the skills to reproduce what you envision. This tutorial aims to give you the foundation to do both. Today we're going to be learning how to define the characteristics of our subject matter, break it down into simple forms, and learn to make creative choices to draw it in a stylized fashion. Artists and creatives everywhere are always in pursuit of defining their style. To stylize an art means to represent a subject in a way that is not realistic or lifelike. For example, a realistic heart looks like this. A stylized heart might look something like this, or of course, like this, the heart shape we all know and love. I enjoy looking at stylized art and illustration because it really allows me to see the artist's creative choices in their work. Another thing I like about it is that stylized art can also enable you to work more quickly and achieve a finished result faster. Realism looks amazing, but let's face it, it takes a long time, and I'm all about that instant gratification. However, drawing something quickly means nothing if you don't have the skills to back it up. The first thing to do if you want to draw a bear is to observe a bear. Obviously this may present a challenge for most people, so we're going to turn to an image search on the internet. So we've searched for bear and now we're scrolling through and just making some initial observations. There are many types of bears, but they're all fluffy, roundish, kind of bottom heavy, with four legs, small eyes, and two rounded ears. I'm just kind of doing all this in my head as I look through. Let's take one of these photos and break it down into simple shapes. Let's drop the opacity and create a new layer. Let's try to trace this bear as simply as possible. An oval, some rectangles, and a few circles, and we've got something vaguely animal shaped. Let's start again, paying attention to the characteristics that make the bear shape unique, like the little hump here, the thick hind legs, the way the front legs go back a little before they go down, how the back paws appear to be bigger than the front paws, and that the thickness of his neck is about the same size as his head. I'll use a bean shape for the body, connect the head to the body, break the legs down into a few smaller shapes to show the form better. Now that pretty clearly looks like a bear. Let's resize that and just put it at the top of our canvas. Let's grab another reference photo. I'm gonna see if I can repeat some of those same shapes to help me develop my own system of sorts for drawing a bear. The bean shape, the neck, we'll do the face in side view this time so a half circle will do. We'll break the legs into sections. Use the joints of the animal to guide you. As you continue to do more of these sketches, you'll start to notice things more and more, like how bottom heavy bears are. Let's do a couple more. I'm starting to really like this method of drawing the head, a rectangle, half circle, and a trapezoid for the snout. It's simple, but does a good job of conveying bear, and I really like the way it looks. Practice drawing a couple more like this. I can see here that it would work well even if the bear's head is tilted differently. I'm also noticing that the bear's eye is right near the end of the snout, and I think there's something interesting happening in this sketch. I'll draw that again and even play around with connecting the eyes to the snout for a different look. I can even play around with the proportions using the transform tool. The more sketches you do like this, the better you'll get. Let's shrink all those down too. Now that you've done some tracing and have got some sketches under your belt, let's try going freehand. This part can be scary and definitely will take some practice, but don't be intimidated to try. It's always good to start with a base, so we know that all the feet are hitting the ground properly. I'm gonna first draw that bottom heavy bean shape, then the neck and half circle head. Add the snout, the eye that is right near the end of the top of the snout, and an ear. Onto the legs. I'm remembering the top of the front legs tilt inward, and I have a bottom section and then the paw. The back legs are a top heavy trapezoid and I'll keep those simple with just one section. He looks a little long and a little short to me, so I'll use transform to adjust. Looks pretty good. Let's select that sketch, swipe down with three fingers to pull up the copy paste menu, and cut and paste it onto a new layer so we can start refining the sketch. Create another new layer and reduce the opacity of the sketch layer. In this second sketch, you'll be inserting your own creative liberties. I like a lot of smooth line work, so I'll draw the legs with smoother lines. I'm also deciding which lines are important to keep and which can go. I'm going back to my sketch to shorten the neck a little bit. I'll draw the head, snout, and I think that looks pretty great. 
I'll show you how I repeat this process a couple more times. This photo is similar to what I've been doing, so that's a great place to start. We've got our bean shape, head, ears, snout, and sectioned legs. That's a good sketch. I'll create a new layer and smooth out all of those lines. Here's a completely different pose, but the same methods apply. We've got more of an oval shape for the body, the neck, head, snout, ears, and legs. Stylistically, I'd like his head to be bigger, and then I'll go back and make all the final line art. Okay, one more, because I found this photo of a bear being freaking adorable. As you can see, we've still got our bean shape. We can do the half circle style head for this one. And we'll close his eyes like in the photo. I think that's cuter. Now we'll smooth everything out in the final line art. Oh, isn't he so cute? From here, the possibilities are endless. There are so many ways you could choose to color this in, adding shading and texture and other details to make it yours. The real lesson here is that the next time you want to draw a bear, you have a method that allows you to manipulate those basic shapes to create whatever pose you want, thus allowing you to be more creative. The steps in this tutorial are only meant to give you a foundation to start stylizing your art. It's only once you learn how to simplify and characterize your subject matter, really grasp an understanding of how it looks, its structure, its movements and behaviors, will you find freedom to explore within style. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you feel more ready to take on challenging subject matter in your art. You can purchase brushes used in this tutorial at bardobrush.com. I would love to see whatever artwork you're creating. If you're posting to Instagram, please use hashtag bardobrush. Happy art making! If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day!